Um, welcome, everybody, and thank you very much for uh, coming uh, to this webinar. I know you're busy. We're all busy, and to make the time for this is really great. Uh, I'm Peter Tyson. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Sky and Telescope, and uh, I wanted to let you know that we're recording this session uh, for later use, and um, I just wanted to introduce our panelists today. Besides myself, we have uh, Deborah Carter, who is the founder and owner of uh, Yoga Safari, She's run tours and safaris in Africa for over 25 years. So she really knows how to put together a tour of this nature. I know because I was on this tour in 2018 and it's really fabulous. Um, yes. Her husband, Steve O'Meara, I'm not gonna leave him out. <laughs> He's <laughs> former Sky and Telescope editor and I, one of the top visual observers in the world and uh, also a National Geographic photographer. And Steve and Sean, Sean Walker, you see there, Sean is our associate editor at Sky and Telescope uh, and a super expert in astrophotography and observing as well uh, and equipment, cameras and telescopes and the rest. Um, both of them, Steve and Sean, will be in the field on this tour and helping you at night with uh, any astrophotography you want to do, observing anything astronomy related, they'll both be uh, there to help you. Um, and during the day, there's fabulous uh, safariing, as you'll soon learn uh, as we go forward. And finally, Kelly Beatty, uh, who's a senior editor at Sky and Telescope, and is our behind the scenes guy who uh, really runs the tours program at Sky and Telescope and has been on many of them himself, probably more than anyone else. And uh, so he's, in, he's sort of in the background here, is going to watch for any technical <laughs> issues that, that take place. So, Steve, why don't you take it away? Yeah. Yes, thank you again, everyone, uh, for being here. And I'm going to share the screen and minimize this and we'll get going. So we have our Sky and Telescope Botswana Stargazing Safari, July 16th. Oh, to 23, that should be, sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh my wow. God, that's what, yeah, the big type to the 23rd. Um, and, and it is, yeah, just click here. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so we're going to start off. Where in the world is Botswana? And it's in the southern hemisphere, minus 19 degrees latitude, a similar latitude as the Australian outback in northern Chile. So it's in the deep south, and we have beautiful views of the southern stars. Now, Botswana is not South Africa, it's an independent <laughs> country. A lot of people do make that mistake because usually you hear Botswana is in Southern Africa, but it's not South Africa. So it's an independent country north of South Africa. It's landlocked and it's been a democracy since 1966 and the longest running democracy in Africa. And the Global Peace Index made Botswana the safest place to visit on the African continent. So, and I can vouch after living here for 10 years and my wife for nearly 30, um, we can assure you that that is true. It is. Very <laughs> true. <laughs> it is, it's a wonderful place with wonderful people. And how large is Botswana? Well, there you are. Um, projected against the United States. And we are in, we live in Mound, which is that town in the Northern part of Botswana. The total population of the country is 2.6 million, and that's about the same as Houston, Texas, and Botswana itself is about the size of Texas. Now, the people are actually located in three main regions, Mound, Francistown, and Gaborone. It's actually Haberone, which is the capital. And the population, however, of the 2.6 million of Mound is only 55 thousand people and that's about the same as you get in Portland, Maine. All that middle that you see that is barren is the Kalahari Desert. Now Mound is still a village. This is the downtown region with our major airport and um, this, this is it. You have no sky rises, there's no skyscrapers or high rises and this basically one main road goes through it with our Tamalakani River off to the left. And you can see it's as flat as a pancake. Now we're at about 3000 feet 
altitude and when you be you'll be coming in July which is our uh, southern hemisphere winter so you, you you must be prepared for that now mound is the gateway to the Okavango Delta which is the world heritage site and this is where you will be flying into from your home destination after you probably land in Johannesburg in South Africa. And it's home to the largest uh, elephant population in the world and among other beautiful animals that we can see. And the Global Peace Index for 2022 ranks Botswana to go on safari. And again, we can attest to that. We've been on many safaris, yeah. um, totally beautiful and lovely. The, the, the people, the guides, they're so incredible. And Deborah, of course, my <laughs> <laughs> is uh, she, she coordinates uh, this particular tour and she has 31 years experience in the travel industry and 23 years experience as an eclipse tour coordinator so maybe some of you know her through through that and she has started her own business at yoga safari um, as a travel agent and tour leader and i can tell you that deborah really knows Africa. Now, I, I, and those, in those 31 years of experience are included several in which she overlanded, overlanded from England <laughs> all the way across Africa, from, from the northern tip all the way down to the southern tip. She knows Africa like <laughs> no one knows Africa. So you are in excellent hands under Deborah's guidance. Um, and excuse me, if, if I could just jump in here quickly. One, we had a we had a quick question that I think you can answer. Uh, I don't okay. want to say to the end, and that is, uh, it's not possible to to fly directly to Mound or Botswana from, say, Los yeah. Angeles. You'd be flying through uh, Johannesburg, most likely. Yes, most likely. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And um, yes, and so as you see up in the right hand corner is. Peter Tyson from the 2018 <laughs> tour, um, getting up close and personal with a lion. And um, of course, with he and Kelly and Deborah have worked together tire tirelessly to bring you this particular safari, which is our third successful, which will be our third successful Botswana <laughs> stargazing safari. And <laughs> thank you, Peter. <laughs> this is some of the activity you might be able to see on our tours. Um, anyway, so here's a, a map at the scale, and it shows basically um, our hop, skip, and jump schedule, which is we will arrive, well, you will, anyway, I'll be here because <laughs> I live in Mount. <laughs> um, you'll arrive in Mount Airport. And then we head up into the Okavango Delta to a place called Sable Alley. Then we head further north, east to the Savuti Marsh, the Chobe River. And then for those who want to, you can take the extension over into Zimbabwe to see the awesome Victoria Falls. So, the reason we selected these particular areas, as you can see on this light pollution map, the area in red shows how much light pollution there is in this particular region of Botswana. Um, you can compare it to what it looks like in Johannesburg, South Africa. You can see Mound is just an in insignificant spot. It's truly magnificent skies, southern skies. And again, you get to see the deep southern skies. And these are some of the animals that uh, typical, somewhat typical, depending on your luck, that you get to see. Elephants, leopard, honey badger. We just saw the honey badger just last month. <laughs> um, the Cape buffalo, cheetah, hippos, baby lions, jackals. There's a beautiful male lion, zebra. The kudu with the beautiful horns, giraffe. That's a baby hyena there. And if you're really lucky, and we did see this one on our last trip, um, a sable. Now here we have for those birders, and this is just a, a small section of the magnificent birds that are in Botswana. 
You have the crimson breasted shrike, the quarry bustard, which is the largest flying bird in the world. And the beautiful colors of the, uh, the lilac. lilac breasted roller. Thank you. You have to help me with this one. That's the wattled crane. Wattled crane, yeah. Oh, well okay. Oh, yeah. Now I know the next one is the helicopter bird. Yeah, you can call it that. Okay. <laughs> Because it drops out of the sky when it, I don't know why, but it, it does that. And then there's the kingfisher, the magpie shrike, a fish eagle, lots of fish eagles you can probably see. The um, European little, bee, little, little bee eater. Yep. And then this is the starling yeah. with the beautiful orange eye and the ground hornbills, yep. huge birds, beautiful birds. And then the settled bill store. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning, I'm still learning all the birds, but they're so magnificent and abundant. Now, your first stop will be Mound, and this is what we'll be flying in. I'm Johannesburg, as I mentioned. That's just to give you a little taste, again, to show you that we are still, you can see the Kalahari sands everywhere. We are in the Kalahari Desert. And then from Mound, we immediately, we take light aircraft to our various camps. And you can see the small underneath, these are, um, what do you call these? It's a pod. Yeah, a pod, okay. Where your luggage goes and you're only allowed 44 pounds per person, including everything in soft-sided bags because these planes are quite small, as you can see. Yeah, they're, 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 they're small, efficient, um, so, but the, the luggage capacity is, is small. So you just have to prepare for that. And we can talk more about that later yeah. um, at, at the end, you know, yeah. as far as luggage capacity and so on. But anyway, but these are the aircraft there. Are, many of them are tremendously uh, uh, guidance systems in them. Oh, yeah. Radar incredible. And everything, yeah. yeah, incredible aircraft. And again, just to show you, uh, we will uh, first stop Sable Alley. You can see it's at the very top, right in, right in the Okavango Delta. So, and this is the camp where we will be staying. And the water you see there is actually in this photograph is nothing compared to what's there now. It's a lot larger, much uh, vast expanse of water. Um, and it's been called a sanctuary for the senses. And everything in Botswana, they try to blend into the environment. That's why you see the thatched roof. A lot of wood is being used um, and extremely beautiful. Uh, and it overlooks the lagoon and lots of hippos usually are inside the pool. As soon as you get there, usually the hippos are there. Large, you can see large herds of elephants and other bird life and crocodiles sometimes come in often to drink and you can just be there in, rel in safety watching them, even photographing or videotaping them. And they call this spiritual luxury. And it is, it's, you're really, you're not in a, a camping tent. You're, you're, you're in a very spacious room. You have your ensuite bathroom and toilets, um, all the amenities that you'll need. As it says here, stylish and spacious, and it blends into the nat natural environment. And here you can see an elephant on the bottom image coming by the, by the tent. They'll just come out and graze and eat. They won't bother you. Um, and then the main activity, of course, is the safari drives that we will take and um, lots of the variety of animals. Here we see from Sable Alley, we have Cape Buffalo. Here's a photograph of two of our sky, sky and telescope guests from our last tour with elephants in the background. Great time to see young baby elephants and, and a cheetah, We're, you know, you never know what, what predators you'll see, but um, you, as you can see in this image, you get right up close and personal to them. And then there's many additional activities. You can do walking tours. You have expert guides. They, they are, are fully trained and know what to do and take you in, in safety uh, across the wilderness. 
you can take a Makoro drive, with, um, drive, <laughs> a Makoro ride. And now this is a traditional way that the, uh, the, the native people of Botswana used to um, transport themselves <laughs> prior to automobiles and so on. And they still do today up and down the river and it's essentially polling. They stand in it and it's one of the most calming experiences you, you have. It, it's, it's, you have to experience it if you have water, if there's enough water in these. It's, it's totally calming for the soul. Um, there are also night safaris that they offer and every safari ends usually with a sundown, whether, whether it be alcoholic or soft beverages, no matter what you want, they'll be able to accommodate you. And, and this is great because after being in, in the safari vehicles, you stop at a very safe place the guides get out and ensure there are no animals and you just come out standing on the ground and just enjoying the natural environment of Africa. Now, the, of course, the special activities for the astronomers um, will be observing and astrophotography. As Peter already mentioned, I, I will be taking care of the visual. I will also help you with uh, anyone if, who's also, if there's a lot of people doing astrophotography, I'll also be able to help. But Sean is the expert who, who will be um, taking charge of that. Um, just a notice on the bottom left, I have, I wrote a book here for the government and published by Random House and it's the Night Skies of Botswana. It is available interested in the local lore. I spent a lot of time with the Aboriginal people and um, and a lot of their star lore is in in this book and you might be interested in reading about that before you come. So uh, night observing will have an eight inch Dobsonian and it, which is a reflecting telescope and this is all for visual working observing and now just to let you know it's it's a great time Alpha and Beta Centauri are at their highest in the sky. They're up about 60 degrees high, as is Omega Centauri, which is a glorious time to see, What one of the best times to see Omega Centauri. Southern Cross and Colsac are just halfway up the sky, not far away from them. Um, really beautiful and accessible. It's an incredible section of the Milky Way. And not only that, but at this time, you have the center of the Milky Way rising and by nine, 10 o'clock, it's overhead. So you're gonna be seeing the head, the, the center of our galaxy overhead. It's just, it's just beautiful. And then before we, before we wrap up the evening session, we'll have the small Magellanic cloud in 47 Tucane, which will be up um, rising in the east, will be higher in the east, probably um, 15, 20 degrees high in the east. So we can get a good look at that. Now, Sean, um, oh, I just wanted to tell you for Astro, what I will be offering you is I have an old Ioptron sky tracker, and these are some images I've taken with it with just a regular camera. The top one is a, a, a composite pan from Alpha and Beta Centauri showing the Southern Cross, Eta Carina Nebula, and the False Cross from left to right in that beautiful swath of Milky Way with the dark coal sack. Um, the one on left, but lower left is 47 Tucane and the beautiful Ada Carini region. Now, the, again, these other ones were just um, 50 millimeter shots and the other ones were from 100 to 200 millimeter, only, only about a minute exposure using the Ioptron sky tracker. All right, but now, so th this sky tracker is available for anyone to use and you can share it um, and Sean will take it from here on about astrophotography. Okay, thanks, Steve. Um, as Steve mentioned, you know, we have limited weight capacity on these small flights, so we probably should limit ourselves to um, camera on tripod or maybe Star Tracker images, but there's a lot you can do with that. You can, like the image you see before you, I took a, just camera on tripod. This is a, 
a mosaic of, of five images going across the entire sky that I took when I was in Chile a few years ago. It's roughly the same uh, uh, latitude as uh, Botswana. Anyway, but uh, at later in the evening, the Milky Way goes across the entire sky and you know, it's one of the rare places where you can get the whole thing. It's, um, but I'll be able to help you with uh, uh, taking pictures of these things and potentially composing other photographs and whatnot. Um, with the Sky Tracker, you can do telephoto uh, shots as, uh, as Steve showed us of, of some of the great objects like the uh, Atacarina Nebula and maybe 47 Tucane. Later, uh, earlier in the evening, the uh, um, what the large and the small Magellanic cloud comes up first and then the uh, the large later at night. Is that correct? No, well, actually, this what's going to happen is um, unfortunately for this right around sun, right around when it becomes dark, the large Magellanic cloud is going to be setting. Ah, okay. And then, yeah, and then the, the small Magellanic cloud will come up. But by the time people have to wake up for their early morning um Activity. activities um you, if you go out the, the large magellanic cloud is going to be about 30 to 30 degrees up okay you can get it in the morning. Yeah. yeah so you can get it in the morning fantastic both of those are not to be missed um but anyway i'll be available to help you uh work with your equipment and uh, what we got okay um if you want to go to a few more slides these are some of the images i took when i was last in the southern hemisphere um but everything was just a camera on tripod. I did use a star tracker for a little while, but it's not really necessary with, with really dark skies and, and a fast lens and a modern camera. Um, the, the one on the image on the left that you see here, I was, it was just a 20 second exposure with a, a regular DSLR. I think it's about a six year old model. Okay, could you uh, step forward? Yeah. Um, this is a panorama of the uh, of the Milky Way taken down in Chile a few years ago also. And, you know, it, these things are really easy to take and you, you can come away with a, a wide variety of, of photographs, even without being able to shoot through a telescope. Is there any more? I think we're almost done here. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. And okay. um, yeah, and so with, at Sable Alley, we're really, it, it's probably our, our our best opportunity to take um, the most time for for astrophotography on this trip, and so um, yeah, so this is what we'll be aiming for. It's wonderful. Thank you, um, Steve. To interject, uh, uh, one of the attendees is asking: Does it typically rain much at this time of the year? No, this, okay. this is winter. This is why we, so we this is why we select this thing. You know, of course, I, I can't control earth <laughs> yeah but this is this is the the dry the dry period yeah mm -hmm. we don't we don't get winter rain yeah we don't get winter rain it, it rains for us in our summer so we're going to be coming into our rainy period in november december january so yes. by july it should be cold and dry yeah as what astronomers you know what you what you like is clear and cold <laughs> The, the two things they go together yes so you know just, i'm just going to yes, ask go a ahead. question kelly are there any more questions at this point i see four in the chat i don't know what they are no we i i took care of a couple of them offline uh uh okay. you know yep. uh, questions about like uh uh does it you know does it rain much what's the temperatures like and i, I answered those offline okay all okay. right cool thank Wonderful. you thanks okay we'll carry on all right, so our, our next stop is we, we get again get on our light aircraft and we uh, fly to the Savuti Marsh and our home will be the Savuti Safari Lodge. Um, now this is great because it's, uh, as you see here, it's located on the banks of the vanished Savuti Channel, uh, which stopped flowing sometime in the 90s. And it's at the east end of the Great African Rift. And so you can see in the hills here, in this photograph, you can see the, the iron left from the volcanic uh, deposits in, in this particular region. And another special part of this region is that um, what, one of the activities that if you want, you can make it possible that there are petroglyphs 
that you can see in some of the, the, the rocks. Um, but it's a very special place. And they also have, I know, they have a very great sense of humor. You're going to love the Botswana people. They just, welcome to Savuti International Terminal Passport Control Gate 3. Yes. This is the air, this is the airstrip. This is the airstrip. They, they just, they just, this is their joke. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they're very friendly people. And we have luxury living accommodations. Once again, you can see you're gonna be sleeping and living in comfort. Just looking straight out of that door to the right and you're looking into the open plains. Um, again, ensuite bathroom and um, showers and toilets, everything is there. And this particular region is noted for its predators. And this, these, these are the vehicles that you'll be in. Yes. Viewing the, the wildlife. Yes, in fact, that is the, the company we'll be using. And, um, and you can see how chilled the lion is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one thing but, I'll mention, uh, this is Peter Tyson, uh, with those vehicles is, as you can see, those armrests are very padded. And so if you're gonna take photographs of these animals, you can perch your camera right on there as if it's a tripod, it's really great. Yes, that's right, and 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 they're nicely spaced. We have yeah, 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 and you and everybody gets a window seat, so nobody yeah. nobody Nobody's sits in the, in middle. the middle, so everyone gets a view. And again, the, the guides are especially trained. I mean, you could, this was on our, our last trip. We went we just came we just came back from Savuti. I'm telling you, we were across the plains, and then this man. He, he he spotted this leopard in this truck. Can you imagine being across yeah across a field and then being able to see this little speckled pattern? And he knew that there was a leopard in the tree. And of course, you just don't stand there. We go around. You can see this is a better view of the leopard we were able to get on they, the left. On the left, you know we. They, they work it so that everyone gets an opportunity to get the best shots possible. They're, they're very in tune also with photography. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they know where the best lighting is and so on. And, and I'll be there to help you as well with any, you know, animal photo tips and everything. And he, like on the right, we have also from Sabuti, the marsh, which is open, perfect place for a cheetah, um, which you see on the right. And then you just never know what you're going to see. The animals in Botswana roam free. They're not in a gated park. This is real wild Africa. Mm -hmm. I can't, can't stress that enough. And just like, for example, this leopard just came out of the bush. We, we weren't even expecting anything. Oh. It, it was just beautiful greenery. And then he just came out of the bush walked right in front of the vehicle and we just followed him as he kicked up dust in the sun as the sun was yeah. setting. Oh, it just, you just Magic. never know. Magical, yeah. exactly, yeah. thank you. Yeah. That is the word. And July is a perfect time to see the young animals, the babies. Uh, and this is from our last trip with the s and t And they, the, as soon as they got to Savuti after a, after a greeting, we got in the vehicles and they took us immediately because there was a hyena den. These are hyenas and a baby hyena. And there was about a dozen babies up on the hillside in their, in their den. And they all came out after the sunset. Oh, it was special. They came out going around the vehicles and incredible time. And then mm -hmm. again, on this, la on this last trip, you never know. It, it, we were able to see a den of the painted wolf, the, the mothers, and, and, and I'll just read this, but Botswana is the stronghold for this highly intelligent and much threatened species, which display a group effort to take care of their pups. Only about 5,000 remain in all of Africa. And look, it, it was just so special. Now look at the bottom right, and you just, and again, this is just with a, a simple telephoto lens using those armrests that Peter was talking about. I was able to take this video of the pups playing. <laughs> They're too cute. I know. And then another on another trip, S&T, and, uh, 
Oops, oh, 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 what happened? How did he go back? Oh, it's not playing. Oh. It's also a video. It's also a video. Yeah. It's too bad. It's a cheetah. Mom, mom, mom licking. Yeah, I don't know why it wasn't playing. You were seeing a cheetah licking. What's that? I was seeing did a you... cheetah licking. A... Oh, it is. You do? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you... No, you don't see it? No. It's okay. No, okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. Anyway, I see. I see. Okay. But then you come back and we've been having these beautiful sunsets from the Tonga volcanic eruption in January. Um, and you can come back. We, everyone usually sits by the fire. Elephants and other animals come down to the water hole. And it's just uh, amazing. Again, amazing way to end the day uh, right before you come and have dinner. Uh, and then this, this just to reiterate what, what Sean was saying, so we, we were getting, we we're trying to figure out where to, to go to actually, um, they're going to accommodate us so we can get views like this, which we just took a few weeks ago, these shots. I'm going to tell you, I just set up the tripod. It's, a, it's just a minute exposure uh, with, with, a, um, with a, a 24 millimeter lens. Um, and you can see how dark the sky is. You can see here the zodiacal band, not even the zodiacal light. This is the, the faint part, the zodiacal band, before it goes into the, the Gegenschein. And I know for a fact that uh, not even dark adapted, I was just setting up the camera. I just happened to look up at Corona Borealis, for those who are astronomers and know this. I mean, our, our Corona Borealis, which is sixth magnitude, was just there. You know, you didn't have to squint or anything. You just looked and there was, there was the star. So, um, oh, okay. Okay. I hope, I, I hope that was the end of that one. <laughs> okay. Off we go. Off we go. So, yeah, we'll be doing astrophotography and then um, in, in visual observing. And then we go up to the Chobe River, way up north, right on the border of um, Zambia and Zimbabwe. And we fly across the Chobe Riverfront, looking across from Botswana. On the other side is Namibia. Say it, but it's there. <laughs> wow, there's Namibia, right, right there, right over there. Okay, you, you get to see all of these countries. You do. It's Okay. on that point yeah. oh wow okay yeah. that's great and these beautiful five-star luxury lodge with a spa and a gym <laughs> if you want to do that um and they have animals that roam freely around there it's not uncommon to see um impala on the grass Warthog. warthogs um and they have walkways it's an incredible place you can see that the, the food, you know, wonderfully presented. Um, and then we would go on to uh, a boat cruise. You can see the boat in the upper left that we'll be taking. And it's, it'll just be, be us. And they have a time, they, they do this so well. If this is not just a cruise, you pass by an animal and that's it. No, they, they cruise along, they'll stop the boat. If you see something, They'll, they'll stop the boat. They'll try to get as close as safely as possible. Everyone to get photographs. This is all up to us. And then usually we end up where you can see here, um, where the elephants come down. We just park the boat and just we're there for, I don't know how long, just whatever you, it's, and you can see the babies, you know, like a young baby splashing around in the water. Um, you just have all the time in the world just to, to to take in these magnificent animals and watch them, their behaviors. Like what, we were there so long, we saw a troop of baboons come down. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and, and I, don't, I don't have a video here showing it, but boy, the elephants and the baboons playing yeah. and chasing one another. Um, and here you have the guinea fowls came down. We had crocodiles walking out of the water, mm -hmm. <laughs> coming yeah. out, monitor lizards. I mean, this is just all in one stop parking. Yeah, really, yeah. it was amazing. It's very fun. I know. And then we come back, we, we eat, and then you go on um, a land safari, but actually in a game. 
vehicle, I mean, a, a safari vehicle, and you go along and uh, you see beautiful landscapes like this. Uh, we were there, how many lines did we see? Oh gosh, I don't know. I don't know. 15. They may be 15, 15 lines. Um, these are all females that were talking. Here they all greeting one another. Just, and right outside, we were right there. You know, this again, this, this was probably, I don't know, might even be taken with a 50 mil millimeter lens. And, and then later in the sunset, this beautiful male lion came. Like I said, you know, they know where the sun, yeah. how the best yeah. position. And so you get, you get the gorgeous shots. Um, and oh, the, the animals are just so accustomed to the vehicles. They don't bother you. And some other animals we saw on the, on the, on the ride, we saw these, uh, a bunch of hippos. That's just maybe five of about 15 that were lying on the bank just resting. Later on, it, before we got back, after a sundowner, we came, we found a leopard in a tree, giraffes, we have the jackal. And then it, on the lower right-hand panel, the most, one of the most endangered animals in Africa is the roan antelope. And it's one of the largest bovine and one of the most elusive. You hardly ever see them. And again, no. What did we see? Very rare. Oh, we saw about 15. Again, 15 we saw about, seems to be we the saw about 15 of these grown antelope. And we even saw them earlier in the day, just a, a, another couple. And so, again, you just never know what you're going to see. And shots, we, we, we came, we met with the owner, uh, uh, the manager. The general manager, yeah. Yes, of the, of the lodge. And he said, I'm going to take you away from the lodge where the lights are and we're gonna go up on a hilltop and it's just a very short drive. And, um, and that's, he, they're gonna do something really a little special set up for us. And we can finish up our visual observing and astrophotography there. Um, you know, the, the shot on the right was taken from that spot, just shows the coal sack, the Southern Cross is in there, Alpha Beta and Centauri up on top and Ada Carini is down at the bottom. Um, and this was even later at, later at, than we would be going up. And of course, the image on the right is the beautiful Southern Cross with the coal sack, the dark coal sack nebula, little Musca, little constellation of Musca the fly below the Southern Cross and the Ada Carina region. Oh, it's just feel littered with beautiful open star clusters. I, I think this particular region right there on the left that you see is the most Van Gogh-like starscape in the entire sky, not to be missed. I, 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 I never tire of this particular region. You can spend an entire lifetime looking at the objects in, the, in here. It's just so gorgeous. And, and that will end our journey um, on the Botswana side. And then for those who are interested, we hop over to Zimbabwe. Yep, correct. to Victoria Falls where we'll be staying at Victoria Falls Safari Lodge, which is a great lodge and has a water hole uh, where elephants come, well, all sorts of animals come to drink. And every single person's room will have a view of the water hole. So you'll be able to be in your room on your balcony, looking out at the water hole at the animals that are coming down. And the, the food there is excellent, as you can see, um, we'll be getting breakfast and dinner, both nights included. And um, the rooms, as you can see on this side there, they all have their own balcony. So you can also just sit and watch all the animals come into the waterhole. And you get two activities included in the price. And one of them is a sundowner boat cruise that includes drinks and snacks. And so you go on this boat with the group onto the Zambezi above the falls and get to see hippos in the sunset with the spray of the falls in the background is quite beautiful. And then the other activity is a walking tour guided tour of Victoria Falls. And I, the first time I ever saw the falls was, um, I actually don't know how long ago it was now, but I wanna say it was something like 1987. And I remember back then there was no internet, there were no cell phones. 
So I just wrote postcards to everybody I knew. And I mean, everybody I knew. And I was writing, if you only do one thing in your life, you should go and see Victoria Falls. The power of it, the magnificence of it is absolutely incredible. So this is what you would see if you take an optional uh, flight over the falls, which David Livingston called um, Flight of Angels. And it really is, a, it's a, it holds a very special place in my heart. And I think for, if you're coming this far, if you're coming all the way to Botswana, you really should just spend the extra two days and um, do yourself a favor and go to, yeah. go to Victoria Falls. I would the highly power, recommend it. Yeah. The power. The power of unspeakable. I mean, you see these gorges in this picture, the one where the water's going over. So that's the most recent gorge. But if you look to the left, there's another gorge. If you look beyond the, the bridge, there's another gorge and another one, another. There are seven different gorges that have been created by the power of this water over the millennia. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's it's really hard to to explain how powerful and forceful and incredible it is but yeah i would i would definitely go adding this to the end of a botswana safari is yeah piece de resistance yeah yeah so oh, we just it. hope to see you yeah in beautiful botswana yeah, next year. Next year. And it. this is the uh, the link if you want to learn more. And in fact, if you go to this link, you will be able to find some video of each of the lodges, lodges where we will be staying that will give you more, an more idea. Uh, uh, an expansive view yeah. of what it's like. So, yeah. Yes. Thank there you. we go. Thank you, Steve, for all of that. Yes, and thank you. <laughs> and thank you, Kelly and Sean. And if anyone's got any questions, we're here. Yeah. Right. So so we have two or three quick questions that I, I save for the end here. Um, one is uh, from Gilbert, who wants to know what the COVID-19 precautions are uh, in Botswana. I want to remind everybody that uh, Sky and Telescope and the American Astronomical Society require our tour participants to be fully vaccinated. Uh, that is subject to change as the months, you know, who knows what, what fully vaccinated will look like in, in a year from now, but that's our current plan. But Debs and, uh, and Steve, what, what does Botswana require? Well, at the moment, it's fully vaccinated, but if you're not fully vaccinated, they will allow you to come in with a PCR test that is uh, no older than 72 hours. Um, and they are asking for you to wear masks indoors if you're in an enclosed space, but nowhere on the safari are you ever indoors in an enclosed space. Um, and that's, that's about it. You don't need a PCR test to leave the country unless the country you're going to demands it. But yeah, so it's, and I have a feeling by July, 2023, that those things will be relaxed will be more relaxed even yeah. more relaxed but we don't know one right. can't say that. right and and nick has been asking some great questions his first one is uh what how do, how is laundry handled what are the washing facilities yeah, yeah. Like? laundry laundry is included everywhere um so you that's why you don't have to bring many clothes and you do not need any formal clothes so it's all casual wear the whole time. The only thing you will need is because it is the middle of winter, you will need to have gloves and a beanie and a scarf and a jacket um, and layers. But, uh, you know, you really only need a couple of pairs of, of, of longs and a couple of pairs of shorts and maybe three or four shirts, a couple of T-shirts, and then laundry is done every day. So they take the laundry from you when you leave your room in the morning and then it's back in the evening. Man, I would like that here at my house. I know. <laughs> I'll tell Cheryl. I know, they're very good. <laughs> ouch, Hold ouch. Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> Nick, Nick also asks, uh, uh, the, the participants are responsible for their own flights getting to Mound, and then at the end of the trip, uh, also the departure, how do the flights work? 
Yeah. So if you if you're just doing Botswana, you will fly into Maun and fly out of Kasani, which is spelt K-A-S-A-N-E. If you are doing the Victoria Falls extension, you will fly into Maun and fly out of Victoria Falls Airport. And there are many airlines that fly from the United States to Johannesburg. And also, um, I think some, some fly into Victoria Falls. I know we had a lady who came on Ethiopian and she flew into Victoria Falls. And then, but there are many, many airlines that fly into Johannesburg. And then from Johannesburg, there are two flights a day coming up to Maun. And there are also flights going from uh, Victoria Falls down to Johannesburg. Uh, okay, um, uh, let's see. Uh, 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 Jerry wants to know how warm it typically gets during the daytime, during the drives. Okay, um, I would say around about, I don't know, about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, I've taken off my, you know, my main jacket and, mm -hmm. and maybe you could be wearing something like I'm wearing, which is just a shirt. So it's probably about 70 degrees in the middle yeah. of the day. Yeah. It may, it may I mean, get... it can be about 40 at night, maybe even lower. It could go down to 30. Um, but then in the middle of the day, it's, it's, it's fairly warm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, you'll need layers. Yeah, Layer, layering is the way to do it. Right, and Chara would like to know if drones would be permitted. I would, unless you get official permission, I don't think you can. Drone, no. Drones, you no. Can't. Do you, no. You, you, you have need, to have a license. You have to have a license in and Botswana. A, you wouldn't be allowed a drone. There's only a few people that are allowed to have drones here or a license. And uh, I, I know that Sean is uh, answering this offline, but David wants to know about, about the best cameras and lenses to bring. Uh, Steve and, and, and Sean, you both kind of yeah. touched on this uh, 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 for but the I game. Will say one thing. Yeah, I will say one immediate thing is that it's best to have, okay, oh boy. It's best to have two bodies. I know that may be, I'm just saying, it, for those who say more on the professional end of something, it's best to have two bodies, one with the telephoto lens, one with a wide to, you know, 50 millimeter lens. Um, but it, it's, but I, I should just say that because to, if you don't want to be changing lenses on the way, on, on route, you don't want to be, I guess the other option is that you have those zoom lenses. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sean, you want to add anything about that? Um, I had already saying, you know, um, for an astrophotography point of view, I would suggest no more than a 200 millimeter lens. And uh, you're really going to get more use out of the wide angle lenses. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I'd echo that. You know, you, you, I think for the, for the game drives, having something like up to a 200 millimeter lens is great for those close-ups, but uh, uh, for the for the nighttime stuff, like even even a 35 or 50 millimeter lens would be plenty and yeah. and probably wider angle than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's yeah only def definitely. I mean, let's put it this way: I I know it, it, it's all up to the individual. But many times you get you get close to the animals. I mean, personally, I just use a two hundred millimeter for animal animal shots. Mm -hmm. I know, I know that's crazy. But if you're, you don't want to be bringing. I don't. It's not, it's up to the individuals. Really, can't, I can't tell people what to bring and what not to bring. Um, I know the bigger lenses, the fast lenses, they're very heavy. But then you have consideration. So. I'm just coming at it from a, a, a simple standpoint. Mm -hmm. I have one comment to add about the great chances for photography here. Um, you can shoot animals and the stars in a single shot at some of the places. When you're at the lodge and elephants are in a water hole, if you're yeah. adept enough at photography, you can capture both in one shot, like Milky Way and elephants, which is a real treat. Yes. I mean, if there's a specific question, I'd, I'd love to help, um, but these are just general comments. 
Right. And, and Barbara asks, uh, uh, you kind of touched on this. Uh, will there be naturalists during the day uh, on the on the safari drives to to help identify the birds? Yes. Yes, definitely. Yes. All your safari professional people. guides yeah. is is what they're called here in Botswana. So every every single activity you take, whether it's a you know a drive or walk or makoro, they all have a professional guide with them and they will know their birds. And I can, if somebody is um, particularly interested in birds, I can request the best birding guide that the lodge has got. And I have to say, you know, all those elephants and cheetahs and stuff, they get boring after a while. My, when my wife and I made our first trip to, uh, to South Africa, the, the, I was just astounded by the birds. And, and I remember saying at that time, I would go back to Africa just for the birds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, was, you get a wide variety of all different kinds of life. Even the insect life is, is fascinating. But again, the guides that we have, professional guides have all been trained to, to know the trees, the birds, the animals, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. and uh, we're, we're getting to the end here. So I, I want to make sure I get all these questions in. If I can, please keep asking them because there's a great questions for everyone. Chara wants to know what's not included that we'd need to have cash for. Okay. Tips. So tips to any porters, waiters, uh, your guides and the camp staff. But I do give um, out a, a tip sort of guide. Um, so you will be getting that. Um, also, if you do Victoria Falls, then it's lunches and drinks as well as tips. But other than that, if you, they, some of them do have uh, curio shops where you can just buy, you know, maybe little mementos to take home, but uh, they will take credit cards. So you wouldn't need cash there. And our, and our U.S. dollars uh, good? Yes, U.S. dollars are accepted, yes. Right. Okay. Uh, this will be our last call for any questions anybody has. Um, th these questions have been great, really uh, terrific. Uh, yeah, I want to emphasize that, that um, this is not a big tour. The maximum number of people we could take if we put two people in every tent is 24. There will be some singles. So I'm, I'm estimating between 15 and 20 people. And for those of you who've done traveling or if you haven't, that's an amazingly good size. Uh, you, it's, it's intimate. You'll get to know each other really well. Also, uh, Debs, correct me if I'm wrong, but at, at two out of the three camps, we'll have the entire camp to our group. Is that correct? That's correct. Provided we have 24 sign up, yes. Or we take over the 12 rooms. Right. Okay. Um, I want to, um, I'll be following this up with all of you who've attended with a, a little thank you and, and also some, some links. As Steve mentioned uh, on our website, we have links to three amazing videos to these three camps. Uh, I put in the chat box my email address and that of Deb's. Uh, so that uh, you can follow up with questions that you'd like. We're hoping that this has uh, found interest with you and that some of you would like to sign up. Uh, it is really a rare and exclusive kind of opportunity. Yes, you can do trips to Botswana, but this combination of the game drives by day, the safari drives by day, and the uh, hunting the big game in the Southern Hemisphere sky by night is really unique. And uh, as I said, we've done this now twice before. This will be our third one. Uh, we hope you'll find uh, a way to get in on this while you still can. And if anybody has any last thoughts, I just want to um, toss it back out to Debs and Steve and